So we're getting at it again. More design. The goal today is to get this design done -zo. At least kind of done. We have three things left. Um, we have deployment statistics, deployment scaling, and the ad project interface. So the ad project interface should probably be a global interface. So something that you kick off with a modal, globally available. You can do it whenever, wherever. I mean, my natural, my inclination, my natural inclination is to say it's here. It's somewhere in this bar over here, right? Like that's where it would live. It would maybe be on the bottom here and it would just say add new project. Be a big button you smack. That's fine. So we'll build the modal on top of this guy real quick. So we can figure out about how much space we have. Something like, something like that. That's the color we want to use. <laughs> no, just do that. Okay. And uh, I'll pull that down here. We, we can go bigger around the corners. Bigger. More curves. More. Oh, yeah. There it is. So since it's a modal, we probably want to give it a nice title area up here. Okay. So we now have to throw a name on the modal now. Big old, big old namey boy. Oh my, why did I make the font so big? I knew I wanted him big, but not that big. Okay, so this is sort of a humongous modal and we started it this big, but we'll probably make it smaller as we go because we don't really need all that much stuff. Uh, we need to name the project as it goes in and then we need to select the folder set the engine and version and select the template. So if we were to think about this, like it says, uh, select, the, select the folder you want to save this to. If there's files in that folder, we'll preserve them, but you won't be able to set a template there. To install a template, we do a git pool from a repo, but if anything's in your directory, it's going to get nuked. We don't want to deal with conflicts or anything. So like, I think it'll be a thing of like, we won't even show them the template, you know, the option to template if there's anything in there. So keeping that in mind, keeping in mind, it's probably not gonna have all that stuff. Let's make it a bit tinier. Okay, we definitely have farm elements to do this. So let's go grab them. We are gonna just sort of jammy whammy, jammy whammy some text in here. We'll try to give it a little bit of a flair that says sort of like, hey, you're doing a thing and this is how this is going to work. Okay. Is there anything else we could do here? Uh, yep. I got an idea. So I'm going to put some navigation up here. I'm going to show one of these is optional. It's like a little dashed line guy. What? It was the worst dashed line I've ever seen. <laughs> okay, so you set the project name. Now... You're going to add the folder. You select the folder. All right. So this is going to be like set project path. And I think what we'll do is we'll sort of have a path up here. I think it might make more sense is you're not going to type this in. You could, but you're not, you're just going to want to see it. So we're going to grab the other form element that we have for that kind of stuff. So this could get a bit wider. Um, but maybe that'll be enough. Let me grab a path from like a real project. Hold on. I got an idea. So we'll say like create folder or import. This is not a one or the other situation. This isn't like we have to do it one way or the other. Let's just do it both ways. Let me just move this up. Cause this will be like the same step. It'll just be a micro interaction. It's just a step to a to B. Use existing project first, create a new folder. I'll make these big old buttons. Big boys. Big boy. So do we need to use both of these maybe? So if they use an existing project, there ain't no template setups happening, but they're still gonna have to set an engine. So I think we're gonna have to show both states. Okay. Let's just pretend we're gonna simulate out that they are, they hit create new folder. We're going to have to, I think that's enough to let them know they're creating a folder, right? <laughs> like, I don't think you have to go any further than that. Okay. So if that's that, then let's show selecting a folder. Uh, okay. So this is like, they're using a folder. We'll say selected project path. And then let's uh, call this uh, pluggy, pluggy app. 
it's like, for some reason, the, the first version was called Pluggy App V1. So next step, I'm thinking like there's 15 potential version or engines that could be chosen, right? I think what we should do is sort of show what uh, we envision the drop down to look like. Maybe they'd be like about that big. Okay, let's give her some uppy downy arrows. Okay, engine versions can probably be extremely long. So the reason I don't think we can do just the word closure, whatever, um, let's look at Ruby and I'll show you. Cause Ruby has different flavors of the engine. So you would call all the engines Ruby engines, right? But Ruby has a different way to run called JRuby. Oop, right there. And that's gonna be our outlier case that we have to cover for. They really jumped the versions there, huh? JRuby 1.7 to JRuby 9. <laughs> they just like, just skip two through eight. They suck. Um, that looks fine. I mean, why do we need to do anything else here? That looks good. Okay, and then you tap set engine. Okay, would go and uh, to the next step here. And create. Now, I guess if you get to this final point here and on this final thing, it should be them selecting a template as an option. They they have it. This this is done here. This is where this form terminates. Now for this guy. Uh, OK, so we need something here that would sort of say, like, use a template or just, you know, make my project, baby. Just do it. Just make it. I think we'll go back because we already have a pattern established. There's no reason to kind of reestablish patterns. We got this guy. OK, so start from scratch. That would be a terminal option, so they'll get that orangey. And we need a little icon for that. So there, there's got to be a rocket ship. That's the one I want. I want the rocket ship. Found it. But boom, launch it, baby. Off you go. Um, so pick a template. We need another icon for that. Why not just put a selector right there? Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. Hold on. We don't need this. Get out of here. Go. Okay, you two. Get. And we'll, we'll just do this. Select pre-config. And then, yeah, that would just be the result of... Oh, that looks horrible, though. Let's get rid of this. Okay, so what if this person is, uh, they've got Ruby. Um, we'll say they're they're gonna select Ruby on Rails. Why would they not? Why wouldn't you? It's a ideal, perfect framework. What, what is that? Where'd that guy come from? What are you doing back there? <laughs> just, <laughs> I was just sitting back there waiting. It was like, he was on for the ride. It was a long, just, just coming with us. Looks about right. Let's let's walk through it. So we start here. You tap the add new project button. You type in your project name. You hit proceed. Then this flips in. It says uh, create a new folder or use an existing project. Okay. So I have clicked create a new folder. Now it takes my project name and auto sets that. I hit create folder. It moves over to this. It asks me to set the engine. Okay. Set the engine, moves over to this, says select the pre-config. I select either generic or Ruby or whatever, and I set the engine and create. If I selected the existing folder, it just says use this folder, okay. And then it still asks me to set the language and the version. So I do that, but that's it. Do we want the optional uh, one from pre-config as a separate box on purpose? Do we want it here instead? So let's say we have a Rails config. It makes the version irrelevant. Our Rails config is gonna overwrite that. So really it's like a pre-config and then if that is generic, you you activate this. So that that's there from the get-go. They select Ruby, Ruby populates this thing. It would say something like at default, it might say generic Ruby, whatever. When generic Ruby is selected, they can select this. Once they select the framework, this locks up. We could try something. This is this is scary for me to do this. 
but we're gonna try it. We could just like get them all in one line and hope we don't ever exceed the length. That's not bad. It's not like perfect, but that's that's pretty cool. Boop, boop, boop. Set engine create. Okay, off she goes. And then there's the other one where you can actually just set the version directly. But I think we're good on the add project interface. I think that's great. I'm gonna start saving these out. Um, I think it's about that time. Take care, have a good weekend, whatever. <laughs> See you guys later.